What's going on guys? We got another big trade going down in NHL today with the Toronto Maple Leafs trading for Mark Giordano. This trade's been ruined for the last few days or so. Finally happened. Honestly, I think Dubas did good here. Giordano's a very solid veteran defenseman. I feel like that's something the Leafs could use more of a few veterans. Even though he's older, still plays well. You can see there, 37 years old, 86 overall in game. Making 6.75 for one more year, so he is a rental. And they do give him a 50% to make sure he can fit into the cap. In game, you can see he's got some X factors there. Solid defenseman. I think, like, what, three or four years ago now he won the Norris. Still looks good. Definitely the Kraken's best defenseman. And Dubas was able to get him without giving up a first round pick. So, considering, like, the price of everything else yesterday with, you know, the Lindholm trade, uh, the Hagel trade before that, even Sherratt got a first round pick. Uh, I think the Leafs did quite well here. They also get back Colin Blackwell. It's like a solid depth forward. Um, I think he's got a really cheap contract too. Yeah, only making 750k. Should be able to fit in well in their bottom six or even just be kind of an insurance option if someone gets injured. So the return here, guys, from the Leafs is two seconds. One in 2022, one in 2023, as well as a third round pick in 2024. I think you notice with a lot of the trades happening that the, the picks are spread out between the years. That way teams will have one year where they have like literally zero picks and aren't getting any new prospects. So I do like, you know, the balanced approach, spreading out the years. I feel like that's something I'd actually do in NHL 22. Now, Trump be able to leave maximum salary cap here by about 600k and that's with Giordano at 50 percent all right guys so i think the simplest solution is taking blackwell off is actually then the trade could go through again this is medium difficulty i'm thinking because 50 percent retained seattle's gonna say no even though Giordano is on the block and they want both seconds trades rejected yeah so uh to put this through without any salary retention probably gonna have to come back in with the salary cap turned off. And real quick guys, before I show you the Giordano trade with the salary cap turned off, the Leafs made another trade today, sending Dermot to the Canucks for a third round pick. As you can see in game, the Canucks want Dermot, the Jets third round picks on the block. Dermot's got a lot more value, so they're definitely gonna say yes. Thing is, we actually have to add a player on their side just so the trade will go through. So we'll add somebody with like no salary. So keeper there I think is a good candidate. As you can see, yeah, Dermot's like probably double the value and the Canucks do say yes. Personally, I think, you know, I'd rather have Travis Dermott than a third round pick, so I get it. Uh, maybe this think a second was too much, but I at least want, like, you know, a third and a fourth back, maybe. So now I'm going to try this trade, guys, with the salary cap turned off. Two seconds and a third value-wise for Giordano and Blackwell. The value's actually really equal in game. I feel like the Leafs win this one, though, just based on market price. I feel like the Kraken should have gotten a little bit more for Giordano. We'll see what happens here. Trades accepted, okay. And when they're healthy, guys, here's what the Leafs lines might look like. Obviously, not going to break up Bunting, Matthews, Martin on that first line. They've done so well. Same with Nylander, Tavares, Cash on the second. Third line here, you got Mikhaev, Camp, Engvall. Fourth is Spezza, Kerfoot, Simmons. Now, defense is kind of tough to decide what would happen, but I think when healthy, Riley Muzzin makes the most sense for the top pair. And then you reunite Brody, Giordano, who obviously played together in Calgary. I've got Sandin, Hole as the bottom pair. Scratch there, you got Labushkin. I know they just trade for him, but in my mind, he's kind of like the worst of those seven guys. Like, he's solid defensively, but I think the rest are all just better overall. Um, also, too, you got Clifford Blackwell. You can fill into the lineup if a guy's not playing well, if a guy gets injured. And then goalie-wise, right now I'm thinking, you know, they will go with Campbell as a starter for the playoffs once he kind of regains their trust. And then Wool right there is the backup because they actually put Mrazic on waivers to make this trade happen. And right here, guys, we'll give you your first look at Giordano as a Toronto Maple Leaf. This one, we'll see... Honestly, doesn't look terrible. Number five, Jero Dano. I'm not gonna try this trade as the Kraken, guys. Again, I had to turn salary cap off just so it'd work. Like, uh, there was too much going on to try and make it work any other way. Now, as you can see, they're at least interested in both Giordano and Blackwell. They have their two seconds on the block. Not the third, but I'm sure they really don't care about trading it. Value is on their side a little bit, but if they want Giordano, they're probably fine with it. Trades rejected, okay. Which means E actually feels like Seattle got the better trade here. Seeing as they accepted the picks from the Leafs, but the Leafs declined giving up the picks for Giordano. Uh, in real life though, I think, you know, the Maple Leafs definitely won this one. Uh, that's not too bad of a return at all, especially when they gave up a first round pick for Felino last year. Like, Giordano should help them out quite a bit. And that's gonna do it for this video, guys. If you enjoyed it, leave that thumbs up. Let me know in the comment section which team you think won the trade. Also, if you haven't yet, click that subscribe button. Thank you guys so much for watching. Have a nice day. Goodbye.